Hello. And hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Good. Especially you, Thomas. Thanks for showing up, Thomas. I mean, you did send in this video right here, The Forgotten Story of Independent Sarland. I saw something about Sarland. I forget if it was a meme or something. Anyway, I had never heard about it. And I still, I'm wholly ignorant on the subject, but apparently it was some kind of independent, uh, I don't know what, nation? And part of Germany? I don't know. But this video should open my eyes. The Tim Traveler, go check him out, link down below. It's got quite a few views, I'm excited. Wow, look at it, beautiful! Is that Sarland? <laughs> Hello and salut! It is August 2020. I'm actually filming this the day after my beautiful oh. landscape right here. Hello and salut! It is August 2020. I'm actually filming this the day after my video about the Folkling and Ironworks, go. and that means I'm back in Germany. Whoa! Now I need to look up a video on this button right there. I would be terrified to press that button, but I would. I would. I would have to press it. But what does that... I mean, I guess it's self-explanatory. It opens the door. But that's pretty cool. I've never opened a door myself on a bus. You know what I mean? That's usually the bus driver's job. Or a train. In Germany. And I'm back in the region of Saarland. A few stops further down the line. Metlock. Shout out to Metlock. Now, on the... Metlock. 3rd of October this year, Germany will be celebrating... It was a train, okay. 30 years of reunification between East and West. And Yay. why were they split in the first place? Well, I'm sure a lot of you know, it all goes back to the end of the Second World War when the Allies occupied the West and the Soviets occupied the East, and Germany ended up being split into two independent parts. Except that's not quite true, because there was also a third part that... Oh, that little part down over there. Well, who occupied that? It kind of gets forgotten, but it had its own flag, it had its own coins, and huh. it entered its own team into an Olympics and- Damn, I want a Sarland coin. Oh my God, how do I get my hands on one of those? And a World Cup. So what happened to it? This is the forgotten story of independent Saarland. That's clever, I like that. The Tim Traveler, Time Traveler. This is the bridge over the River Tsar in Metlach. And today we're going for a scenic walk along the river and then we're gonna climb up to a viewpoint and I've been told it's the most beautiful view in Tsarland. But wait, Tim, what? Since when do we just go on a nice walk? Surely there's going to be something else to talk about on the way, like a weird railway, or the world's longest something, or... At the there is something mysterious up here. I want to know what that is. At the very least, a massive territorial dispute. Luckily, the story of Zarlant is a complete mess. The area around the River Tsar was originally settled by Celtic people, and then it's taken over by the Romans, and then the Franks, and then the Carolingians, before eventually it becomes part of the medieval kingdom of Germany, within the Holy Roman Empire. And that's how things stay for several hundred years, except for a short period at the end of the 1600s, when France occupies it, and then another period at the end of the 1700s, when the French come back for more. And I mean literally more, this time they took a whole chunk of land north of here as well, Anyway, they controlled it right up to 1815, which, if you've been paying attention, is Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, at which point it's given to Prussia, and then in 1871, Prussia unites with various other Germanic states to create the German Empire. Right, so that- Not confusing at all. Got it, I'm right there with you. That's the simple bit. And more about That's that- the simple bit, great. That in a moment, but I'm now turning off the nice flat path along the river, and heading sharply upwards on this little trail which will take us up to the viewpoint. And that means- I'm trying to use my German sign knowledge to figure out what this- It's been a while, you know what I mean? But there's a bicycle. I think that means bicycles prohibited. Take us up to the viewpoint. And that means it's time for a Saarland scenery mon- I didn't think that sign would exist in Germany. Taj.
Y'all have some beautiful mountainous landscapes. Something you don't see here in Indiana. Okay. You know what? To be honest, I'm just going to skip to the view, guys. And it is the pretty view. spectacular. Some people have even called it Germany's answer to the horseshoe bend, although one of my London mates called it Germany's answer to the Isle of Dogs, which is what I call sarcasm. But either way, it's definitely worth a photo or two. <laughs> now sure, that it's got was- its own built-in photo frame. A nice hike and a nice view and everything, but I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be so much better if there was a Baumwipfelpfad? What? Well, look at that. Turns out they've got one of the biggest oh, Baumwipfelpfads in Germany, but there's a cue for it. So while we're- I assumed this word just meant map. It was pointing to the map and that would be typical German language right there to take a concept as simple as a map and call it Baumwipfeltad. The biggest Baumwipfelpfads in Germany, but there's a cue for it. So while we're waiting, Let's go back to the story of Saarland. So 1871 was really the first time that all the Germans got together. It was the original unification of Germany. Yay. And the newly formed country enjoys more than 50 years of relative peace and stability. But then someone shoots an Austrian and World War I happens. And if you live in the Tsar region, your nationality is about to change. Five times in the next 40 years. So you begin World War- What is going on in Saarland? People- Love Sarland, huh? They really want to occupy this land. Is it rich in something? One as a German, but at the end of the war, the Allies take one look at the Tsar Valley and its rather profitable coal fields and steel. Coal. Steel industry and say, right, we'll just take that off your hands for the next 15 years. And they create the catchily named Territory of the Tsar Basin. So you're now under the joint sovereignty of France and the UK. But at the end of the 15 years, you're given a three-way referendum between keeping this arrangement, unifying with France, or reunifying with Germany. And over 90% of you vote to return- I really like the old German flag. Home to Germany. Only problem is, it's 1935. So you begin World War II as a- Bad timing. German, but at the end of the war, the French who clearly have a bit of a thing for you, somehow managed to sneak you away from the rest of Allied-occupied Germany and create the separate Tsar Protectorate, which means you become pretty much your own independent country, but with military protection from France. I mean... That's crazy. At this point, France is basically acting like a sleazy guy in a nightclub. You've turned him down several times. They looted Germany. They looted Saarland. You know, it's like when there's chaos, you know, like during Katrina. There was tons of looting during Hurricane Katrina because it, it was all in chaos, you know. There was no law and order. That's what France did. They looted Saarland when it, when it was all, you know, up for grabs. <laughs> and he's still cornering you saying, why do you want to be with Germany? You could be with me. Creepy. I will look after you. And all you want to say is, what on earth is a Baumwipfelpfat? Crest Pro Health I had forgot about that. Oh, Crest. Well, it's one of these. It basically translates into English as treetop walkway. And you've probably seen- Whoa! Okay, I was gonna say that's just a bridge, but, um, wow. This is why people want Sarland right here. I wanna occupy Sarland. Look at this freaking thing. Walkway. And you've probably seen a treetop walkway before, but this one. Uh, no, I haven't. Is on steroids. It's over a kilometer long, and at the end, it becomes. And that's the thing that I, 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 I pointed out at the beginning. It's all come full circle. This is a beautiful moment right here. This was in the background. A little foreshadowing, I guess. It's a spectacular observation tower. A bunch of these have been springing up across Central Europe over the last 10 years. They're all built by one German company, and this is not a sponsored video, so I'm not going to wang on about it, but they're kind of cool. Right, where were we with the story? Uh, oh, I need to look those up now. What's the German company? 
Ah oh yes, France was chatting up Zarland in a nightclub. What is this video? Increasingly desperate to win the affections of the Tsar people, France banned all pro-German political parties, introduced the French franc as currency, and designed Zarland this beautiful new flag. Those three colours remind you of anything? For Zarland, it was time to drop some increasingly unsubtle It's crazy that this wasn't even that long ago. Hints. They issued local versions of the French franc, but with the francs written in German. They entered their own team at the 1952 compromise there. Olympics, but marched into the stadium with the West German athletes right behind them, putting the Tsar athletes between the two flags. And then there's the story of the Tsar national football side. They entered the qualifiers for the 1954 World Cup, and as luck would have it, they were drawn in a three-team group with Norway and West Germany. In their first competitive game as a nation, they beat the Norwegians 3-2 in Oslo, but after a 3-0 defeat in Stuttgart and a 0-0 draw at home against Norway, it came down to a winner-takes-all crunch against West Germany in front of a full house in Saarbrücken. By all accounts, the Tsar team played brilliantly, but were on the wrong end of a couple of questionable refereeing decisions, and it finished 3-1 to the Germans, and Zarland were out of the tournament. Afterwards, Zarland's star- That would have been cooler if they won. ...player showed just how upset he was by saying, Yeah, I wasn't unhappy with either result. Personally, I feel German. <laughs> I didn't want to stop them from getting to the World Cup. We would have had no chance at any way. <laughs> and the rest is history. The West German team went on to- I wonder what the population of this place was, Saarland. I mean, I guess I can look it up now, but I'm sure it's changed. Maybe I can find a graph. I'm just curious, because it's like, yeah, with only a million people, how are you gonna, how are you gonna win the World Cup? Like, your selection of athletes just isn't that big. That would have been amazing if they did. I don't even know what I'm on right now. This is a cool website. Oh, the fertility rate in Sarland is 1.5. Oh, okay. That's not good. <laughs> to win the final against the great Hungarian side of the time and cheering them on from the stand. Actually, I'm trying to... <laughs> now I'm super distracted by what fertility rate means. Does that mean the rate at which... Um, like how many births per person? I guess that would be 1.5 is good then. The average number of children born to women. See, that's what I thought. So 1.5 is below two. You need it to be at least two for the population to be, you know, going up, I think. At least that's what the math in my head says. Comes that day with several of the Zalan players. In the end, that was the last time a Tsar team entered the World Cup, or indeed the Olympics. In 1950- Where's the elevator, guys? As an American, how am I expected to walk up all this? Five, France offered the people a referendum on continued independence. 67% of voters rejected the French plan, and they finally took the hint. I'm sorry, I need to hear what he just said again. 55, Tsar team entered the World Cup or indeed the Olympics. In 1955, France offered the people a referendum on continued independence. 67% hmm. of voters rejected the French plan, and they finally took the hint. A year later, in what has since become known as the Kleine Wiedervereinigung, or the Little Reunification, oh. Zarland officially returned. Well, that's cool that it was done that peacefully. You know, that's pretty cool. Good job, France. They just gave the people there what a novel concept. What the people <laughs> that you're occupying decide, you know, what they want to do. That's pretty cool. Turned to Germany. And these days, Saarland is pretty German, but... Yeah, I was going to say, looks like Germany. There is still a little bit of Frenchness in their identity. Oh, interesting. Some people here still use the very French greeting, Salut. The local radio station is even called Radio Salut, although, of course, they don't spell it the French way, they spell it the metal way. But more importantly, perhaps, for my French viewers at least, Zarland has more Michelin stars per person what? than any other German state. In other words, 65 years since you ran this. I don't think all of Indiana has a single Michelin star. I don't. 
I could be a moron, but that means you have like a really good restaurant, right? Place. I'm just a simple, I'm a simple guy, guys. I've never eaten a Michelin star in my life. How does it taste? Dusty? They still have the best cooking in Germany. And if that doesn't make you proud to be French, I don't know what will. That was a great video. Shout out to Sarland. I guess if you if I want to get a nice meal, I'll go to Sarland. I did see uh, apparently, you know, Thuringen was in East Germany. So anybody out there thinking, no, the, the Thuringen was the East Germany. He corrected that. So there you go. That was a really great video. Go check out his channel, The Tim Traveler. Link down below. Very informative. Sarland. I'd never heard of that before. I like that. The little reunification. Beautiful thing. What was the date? I'm kind of interested, you know. I might celebrate it. I'll have to look that up. I don't know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Subscribe if you feel like it. Either way, have a great day.